It is painful, it's growing pains, but that creates the income demand. If you never did that and you always only tried to live within your means and not try to expand your means, you don't grow as a company, as a person. All right, uh, welcome to the Trust Business Podcast. I have Maya Weinreb on here. Okay, she's the CEO and the owner, founder of Solvency Now, a bookkeeping firm. Maya, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate you. Yeah, thank you for having me. I love this. Okay, awesome. Um, all right, so good. So first question. So to tell me about you. Tell me about your, your bookkeeping firm and tell me about that. What do you do? And we're really, we're looking for like finance tips for entrepreneurs because I know that me as a business owner, that's an area that kind of like I was a roofer up on the roof and then I got into running a business and now you have to learn business and there's all yeah. these all these things that you don't really learn when you're just out there and you're learning the field of your trade or of your profession. Um, and that's one of the big ones is, is finance. So yeah. talk to me about that. You started this firm and talk to me about that. Yeah, I mean, you're not the only one. Most business owners have a hard time with bookkeeping finances, taxes, you know, money. And that's why I have a bookkeeping firm. Like I was doing bookkeeping for business owners in-house. Like I was, the, you know, their in-house bookkeeper for different companies. I was, um, and I was the CFO for a marketing company. And I kind of just thought that I was, as entrepreneurs do, right? I just thought I was smarter than everybody else. And I was See, like, I'm the opposite. I thought I was dumber than everybody else. <laughs> so why, why did you decide to start your own company? <laughs> That's a good point, yeah. For me, I, I looked around, well, different things. I mean, I had been roofing for my dad for a long time and doing that in the Los Angeles area. And then we were moving over here to Florida and he was like, hey, you know, maybe we could start our own over there. So I was just kind of like, great. So I just kind of hopped on that train. I got my license. So at first there wasn't like a whole lot of passion involved, more or less just kind of like, yeah, I think I'd prefer to do my own thing. I think I'd prefer to be my own boss. Like that seemed better. Yeah. And then it was kind of as I and grew into it. And then you learned and you were like, whoa, having a boss is way easier. <laughs> yes, and I learned that. And then also I was like, you know, I just kind of grew into it from there. When I started, there wasn't a whole lot of like big vision or whatever okay. for me. Okay, so I guess that's a little different of a, you know, way to go because it was kind of like your, you know, your dad and then you took it, almost like took over the family business. For me, it was like, I think a lot of entrepreneurs, and this is a lot of entrepreneur stories that I've talked to, they just kind of get cocky, and they're just like, I don't want to have anyone telling me what to do. Like, I can do it better than this guy. Who's this guy telling me what to do? And I was kind of one of those. And uh, so I started my own thing. And then I quickly realized that I wasn't smarter than everybody else. Yeah. I am in the field of finances, bookkeeping, you know. Yeah. And that's the areas I was smarter than the bookkeep than the uh, business owners and that I was working for. But then I really very quickly gained a lot of respect for all these people that I worked for because I was realizing while I am an expert in bookkeeping, finances, all that they were experts in sales, marketing, running their businesses, whatever it was that they were doing. And I didn't, from my job as the bookkeeper, did not have that big picture right. that I do now, right? And you kind of go, how many, how many entrepreneurs have you talked to that go, well, you know, I want to have more freedom and work less hours and do whatever I want to do. And then they start a company and then they're like, now I'm working 100 hour weeks and have no time to do anything and I'm more worried about making payroll for all my employees or you know paying the bills yeah. or whatever and it's not it's not to say that people shouldn't do it because it's one of the funnest things I've ever done in my life and I'm super passionate about it it's not that I'm passionate about bookkeeping but I'm passionate about building business I'm passionate about helping entrepreneurs and so all the challenges and stuff are just part of it and that's what makes it fun because it's your you know everything you do affects your own bottom line so it's not that I don't think people should do it people should absolutely do it but it's just not as easy as you think it's gonna be yeah. and um, I feel like it's one of those things where if you really knew how hard it was gonna be you might not start yeah there's a lot of challenges and there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of different areas and it's it's a lot but okay so but yeah, that, that's one of the thing, right? If you're a new entrepreneur and you're going to jump into business, that's one of the areas you have to learn is like yeah. financial management. That's one of the most important fundamental things. Yeah. So, okay, you're, you're doing this full time for tons and tons of business owners. What's the number one thing that you see that maybe is like a misconception about bookkeeping or finance or somewhere that something that people just get wrong when they start off? Um, I think maybe they think it's not that important or they can deal with it later. You know, and it's kind of like, yeah, 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 I'll just, because there, there's, there's a certain degree of like, yeah, it's more important to go and make money and build your business than to like do the bookkeeping, of yeah. course. And the IRS can't tax you if you're not making any money. Right. So you can't, 
be like, I don't want to start a business until I have someone doing my bookkeeping. That can't be a reason not to. Right. But it is something that you have to do right in the beginning because otherwise it's going to be so painful. And if you don't know, bookkeeping is such a basic for every business. If you don't have bookkeeping, you can't make financial decisions. You can't do financial planning. You can't get investors. You can't get loans. You can't sell your company if you want to sell it. You, you know, you can't even do your taxes. Yeah. You literally can't do anything in business that has to do with growth if you don't have your basic bookkeeping. So as a new business owner or entrepreneur, you have to either learn how to do bookkeeping or hire someone to do it. And it's always going to be an investment of either time or money. Right. So depending on where you are in the business or, you know, how much you have to invest. But that's why, you know, my purpose is to help business owners succeed. So I'm like, hey, whatever you need. If you want me to teach you bookkeeping, I do consultations. Like not bookkeeping, but you want me to teach you QuickBooks and what you need for your company. I'm not going to like do bookkeeping classes for, I mean, I'm actually making a bookkeeping class for entrepreneurs. Yeah. But what I mean is if they come and they're like, I don't know how what to do I'm not going to try to teach them all of bookkeeping and so they can run their business. You, you do. Okay, you actually consult and teach people. I like that because yeah. rather than there's a lot of people who are, I feel like, do bookkeeping and do those kind of things who don't want to do that because if you have somebody on a set plan, a monthly plan, and they're doing bookkeeping, it'd be like, good, I just want to get them on that. I don't want to teach them to do it themselves because then maybe they'll hire someone in-house. But I like that you're like, no, I want, to, I want to help people. If they want to do it themselves, then we'll do a training and I'll train them and I'll teach them and show them how they can do that and go yeah. off on their own. It's not necessarily that easy and it's a lot of work and you know yeah. that. That's why you have a business doing it. Right. But I and like you have that side of Most things. of the time, they're going to come back and say, you know what, thanks for teaching me. I don't really have time or inclination to do this. And I go, great, I'll handle it for you. But there is no scarcity of companies that need bookkeeping. Yeah. So there's no reason for me to be hoarding bookkeeping knowledge or QuickBooks knowledge. I'm like, you want to learn? You want to learn? And I'm not going to teach them stuff they don't need. I'm going to be like, great. The money comes in. Here's what you do. This, the money goes out. Here's how you track it. And then you know, a couple of months later, they're going to be like, I didn't know what to do with all of these ones. And I go, great. Here's what you do with these. So I just... I have no problem. My purpose is to help business owners and entrepreneurs succeed. So whatever I can do to help them, that's great. I'm, I can't, I do a lot of webinars, seminars. I have a podcast, you know, so I'm always trying to help people and you can get on those for free. If you're trying to get me to teach you QuickBooks or, you know, if you're trying to solve specific problems, I'm going to charge you for a consultation, but you, don't you just know, work for free. I'm I have. I've been oh, told I, oh, by I've been told by my marketing people that I am not a charity multiple times. So I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I'll even do a sales call, and I and I always want to solve a problem for them on a sales call. So they're like, da 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 da. And I'm like, oh yeah, you just do. Oh wait, let's schedule a consultation so I can really show you. Otherwise, I'm going to spend an hour and a half here, right. and I have another call in 30 minutes. So, but if it's something I can show them and like. Okay, right before, you know, in January, there's all the 1099 W-2 deadlines, plus all the deadlines are for bookkeeping is January. January is crazy. A few days before the deadlines, I had, I had one day that I had five friends call me in a row. And I was almost like, how can I help you on your bookkeeping and taxes today? Oh, my gosh. And I, but I would tell them, like, if they had a question, I could answer very quickly. I had one friend that was like, Maya, I've been trying to figure this out for hours and I can't figure it out. And she told me the problem. And I was like, great, I have five minutes. Let's do a screen share. Click here, click here, click here, move this to here. Solved. If I can solve it for someone in five minutes, especially one of my friends, your friend, yeah. that they've helped me on so many things. They helped me like build IKEA furniture when I was living in LA in a studio in my 20s. Okay, and that's a task right there. IKEA furniture sometimes. That's like that's something to confront. Yeah, and it was like a really good friend of mine and his wife. They would just come over and build my IKEA furniture. So then she's asking me years later, I can't figure out this bookkeeping thing. I know it's going to take me five minutes to help her on. Let me help you. And then she was like, you know, can you help me on more? And I said, listen, after January, I can sit down with you and go over the rest of this stuff, but I can't do it 
because I have a million deadlines right now. Yeah, it's important to, I found this, and like to set some boundaries on that kind of thing. And it's not that people, I, I, like, I don't think some people will say, oh, it's the people who want to take advantage of you. I don't even think it's that. I think people need help. People want help. But at the same time, you need to take care of yourself. You need to make yeah. sure you're doing what's right for you you're, and not going not gonna, too far. Exactly. You're not going to do a free roof for people. For just yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's a lot easier in my industry because it's like to show up and do a roof, I have to go to the supply store and I have to, you know, pay $5,000 yeah. for shingles and I have to pay the labor all that. Like, it's a lot of money to put on a roof. Exactly. But more to like your end, like consultations and stuff, I'll do stuff like that. I'll go to, a, you know, a friend's place and go in their attic and help them with this. Look at their trusses. Look at this. Look at that. And, totally. you know, there's a fine line between doing too much where it's like, okay, and just helping out a friend. It's a yeah, fine line. Yeah, exactly. But that's what I'm saying. It was a few days before deadlines. I was crazy busy, but I was just like, listen, if I can answer your question in five minutes, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Why not? If it helps you, you know, I had people asking, do I need a 1099 to blah, 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 blah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Do I need to send a blah, 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 blah. No. Okay. Thank you. Like, why not? Unless I was already in a meeting or something. Yeah. And yeah, it's in go all the way back. Um, the, the piece of advice you gave of like, it basically was like, don't backlog the bookkeeping. Like, don't just get started, start doing a lot and then backlog it. Right. Right. And I have another piece to add to that because when I started, you know, I've had various different people do my books and bookkeeping firms and stuff. And I had a company who was doing it and it, it really, it really wasn't getting done like the correct way. It was getting done, but it wasn't getting done all the correct way and stuff. So then I had to get rid of that person, get a new person in, and they had to go backwards and fix a lot of stuff. It ended up being a lot more money than if it had just been getting done all right and dandy as it went. So exactly. we've, we've done, I have experience doing that. So with that being said, what would you recommend to somebody in like choosing somebody to do your books? Like go, cause you can go in house, right? You can hire an employee that way. You can go and get a bookkeeping firm. You know, some people that are bigger businesses are like, okay, they're hiring us a fractional CFO to take care right. of that end. What would be like recommendations or tips from your experience to, to a business owner, an entrepreneur who's like looking at tackling that side of their business? Yeah. So I'm always of the opinion of whatever is the best fit for you. And even I've had people call me and, and I say, listen, we're not the best fit for you. Here's what you should do. Because I'm not just trying to sell. Like, I don't yeah. need to sell just to sell. There's millions of companies in the US, millions of small businesses, 31.4 million small businesses in the US or wow. something. I'm, I might be, you know, somewhere. There's a lot though, yeah. Yeah, so there's no scarcity. So if someone comes to me and I know I can't help them, I'm not gonna try to sell them. If I know that what they need is an in-house person. If a, if a company, and I've had this happen, they are like, they make $30 million a year um, and they have an in-house person and the you know, person's going to retire, I'm like, listen, my company is not the right firm for you because you need a full-time person. We're not providing a full-time bookkeeper. We're doing you know, anywhere from a few hours a month to 25 hours a week. Our biggest client's probably 15 million revenue, but in a, you know, a software field, if I had a construction company making 15 million revenue, they probably need a full-time person. Or like you have a full-time person in-house and a bookkeeper. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense because having the the outside bookkeeper can't do all the collections and do all the things as fast as you yeah, need them to. We have so much do. materials and money coming in and out. Exactly. Yeah. But if you were like a software subscription company, potentially you your bookkeeping could only take 10, 20 hours a week. Right. So it just depends on the industry. So I will tell them and I recently started a, um, a bookkeeping referral group on Facebook where like all the bookkeepers that I know. So I go, hey, this person's not the right fit for me. Does anybody do this type of bookkeeping or this type of software or whatever? So because I'm because there might be like some so industry many. specific stuff, maybe like an industry that's super specific, like hey, maybe I'm not the best at that or something like that. Sure. Well, there's industries we just don't do. We don't right. do restaurants. We don't do hotels. We don't do brick and mortar. Also, there's software we don't do. We don't do. Uh, QuickBooks desktop, we only do QuickBooks online, right? So it's like people who don't want to switch to desktop or, or to online or they're using Xero or they're using FreshBooks or all these things. If they don't want to switch, then it's like, okay, well, maybe somebody else will do that bookkeeping. Yeah. Or if they're too big or if they're really small, you know, it's like, you know, if they're really small, I'm like, great, let's do a consultation. Yeah. You know, let me show you. So the, to answer to that is like, what's the best fit for that person? I will yeah. get all the information and I will recommend. I like that. That's important. And to tie that into like me, my roofing business, we do the exact same thing because like if I'm going and looking at a really small soffit repair or something that let's, we're not the best at that. Like, A, we're not going to be the best price. We're not going to be the best value because our guys have done a soffit repair like that maybe five times. I could send you to somebody who's done it 
5,000 times. That's all they do week in, week out. Yeah. It's like, hey, client, look, you can go to this company here. It's a soffit professional. Go ahead and use them. And I've experienced so many times trying to go out of your comfort zone or out of the boundaries of where you're successful. Then you try to do it, and then you always fall flat on your face. So it's best yeah. to just, what you do is you build an industry partnership with someone over here who's exactly. actually really good at that. And then guess what? You give them that soffit work, or you give them that, that restaurant. Hey, that bar. I, I don't want to mess with that bar and grill. You take care of that bar and grill, bro. Yeah. But then they get something maybe that's really good for you, like right. you like doing software companies. And then it's a symbiotic relationship exactly. with people in your industry. And if you can monetize it, even better. If you can get like referral, referral fee. fees, exactly, sure. then it's great. But even if you can't, it's all about helping the clients. Yeah. Like if my purpose is helping business owners and entrepreneurs succeed, then I'm going to align my actions to what helps them, not just selling them something. Yeah. So I like that. You know, it's so it's like. It, it, it depends on where, where they're at. If they just started their company, maybe they just need a consultation. If they just started their company, but they're like, I suck at bookkeeping and finances, I'm willing to pay for you guys to do it, even like at your smallest package, I will 100% do it for them. I, I really like something that you just said, which is actually so key, it's business gold, which is take your company's purpose, which you said your purpose is to help business owners, that's your purpose, and then align your actions to that purpose. And if you do that, just that simple action, and you look at any action you're gonna do in a given day, it should line up to that purpose. Or any of your yeah. staff, what they're gonna yeah. do in a given day. So just wanted to acknowledge yeah. that, that was a good point. Thank you, yeah, I mean, that's my, my purpose as yeah. you know me, as a business owner and entrepreneur. My company's mission statement for my bookkeeping firm is complete and perfect financial records for the business owner's peace of mind. Nice. Yeah, so we're selling, you know, like I want the records to be perfect. I'm a bookkeeper. Everybody knows bookkeepers are detail oriented. We make lists. We want it to the penny. I yeah. used to have a, I used to work at a company in the accounting department and we had pens that said to the penny. So it was like we would reconcile be like to the penny. So we are like analyzing. We want it perfect. And that is very important. But the other half of that is it needs to give the business owner peace of mind. So right. they come to me all stressed out. I got this letter from the IRS and I got this and I don't know about this. And I go, great, we can handle that for you. And then we give them perfect records and that peace of mind. Oh my gosh. I'm going to put something down on my finance girl's wall. It's going to say, to the penny and for the business owner's peace of mind. I'm going to run them on those mantras. I like that. It's, no, it's really <laughs> true because it's one of the most stressful areas for business owners yeah. is the money. Yeah. And notoriously bookkeepers and accountants don't have fast communication so they're often not like people people right i'm a people person but most of the time they're not so you're like hey can i get my p l and they're like uh-huh and you're like when when do you think i'm gonna get it and two weeks later they're like i'll have it for you in a few days and how are you supposed to run a business like that right so like if you were to figure out how to choose the right person to work for you, like with you, because you're not a bookkeeper, you don't know if they're doing good work or not. Yeah. The number one thing to look at is the communication. Like, are they giving you timely communication? Because then you know if they're a good mm. fit for you. Then when they're giving you timely right. and, communication. And if they have everything together, they should be able to give it to you. If it's yeah. taking two weeks, it's like, oh, they're not actually doing their whole job and now they're having to go. I see what you're saying. It depends, yeah. right? Like if you're paying for quarterly bookkeeping and then, yeah, it might take, a, you know, it's like we're well, asking for it off. Sky yeah. cycle or whatever. If you're if you're at paying for monthly bookkeeping, they can tell you, okay, I'm I can give you the PL as of last month because yeah. I haven't done anything on this month. Yeah, and or to be fair, the business could also be like sometimes a bookkeeper needs information from the business and the business just isn't yeah. giving the information. Yeah. There has to be that communication it's together. If it's an outside bookkeeper, like they need data from the company. Like yeah, hey, we, we're what's not this readers. thing you wrote out to Joe? We're like, not what mind is, readers. Yeah, like what is this thing you wrote out to Joe, dude? You know, whatever the thing is. So exactly, yeah. And that's another thing that's always really funny is the business owners finally get you the information you've been waiting for for like two months. Yeah. And then they're like, can I get your my PL tomorrow? And you're like, because now you're back in the queue, dude. Like, I have a bunch of stuff to do. So you gave it to me yesterday. I've been waiting for it for two months. Give me a few days or a week. Yeah. And that that's that's funny because we run into the same thing. Like, we'll have, I don't know, permits. We, you have to pull a permit for any roof. And we need, like, a document called the notice of commencement. We need it from the client in order to get everything going. And sometimes it's like, you know, wait till the last minute. It's like, oh, my God, no, we're still supposed to get it going and everything. And I find an important thing on that is setting the expectations really well clear with the client. Hey, when you get me this piece of information, then I'll put you on the schedule. And then you'll exactly. be good within two weeks. Like, get me your tile color. And then, you know, you'll be on this two-month list. If you just kind of leave it up in the air, 
and then three weeks later they get you the tile collar and you're like oh good now you're going to be four months they're like i thought that clock started ticking and you're like you know so that's exactly cl cl set clear-cut expectations yeah. with your clients of what you as a business owner need and want from them make sure that they you know do the same with you and then again symbiosis yeah exactly because i've fired clients that aren't the right fit for us <laughs> Oh my God. I, seriously, I've been like, yeah. listen, you know, it's not, like I am mama bear over my bookkeepers. It is much harder to find good bookkeepers than it is to find clients. Right. So if, if the, you know, if the client is being really rude to my bookkeeper or doesn't, you know, is demanding and not giving them time to do stuff. And we have a very organized schedule and, you know, uh, project management software and all that. So if it's just not the right client, then I just tell them, hey, listen, like I'll tr work with them, right? And I'll be like, hey, so, you know, what's going on? Because if it's something the bookkeeper messed up, we 100% will take responsibility and fix it. People get frustrated sometimes. But if they're just being rude consistently yeah. and critical and antagonistic consistently, I'm just going to say thank you so much. We're not the right fit for you. Um, I want you to, you know, I want you to really win. So I want you to find someone that is better for you because obviously we can't deliver what you need. Right. And that's a, that's a very good PR way to go about it and frame it so it doesn't get into any sort of, because you, you know, you want to let them know, hey, we're not the right fit for you, but you obviously don't want to create, a, you know, any sort of an upset. How do you, what do you find successful about, like, I try to weed that out in the beginning if I can. Yeah, of course Like, I try. try to, you know, kind of process it out and find those in the beginning so I don't even end up going with them. Like, what's something you guys do, like, on a bookkeeping thing? Like, okay, restaurants, sure, but, like, a kind of client who you just know, they're not going to fit with my bookkeepers because we're the same in roofing. Like, yeah. our roofers, like, finding roofers is a lot harder than finding clients. Exactly. So, and I wouldn't even say, you know, where us is not as problematic. Like, we will have some, you know, tough clients, but really it's more like, tough roofs and tough roofing jobs and complex ones and making sure that the right money is there so that, you know, the labor staff can get taken care of on it. But anyway, yeah. what, what do that you do? Too, or, yeah. Um, well, I do the sales myself right mm, now. You know, okay. I have appointment setters and people that help me and stuff, but I do the sales. So I really find out like how I do sales is I go, tell me about your company and what you're running into. And they tell me that, da, 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 da. and then I either go, great, we can fix that. We can handle all that for you. Or I go for, recently I had someone say, Hey, I want to switch from desktop to online. I'd like you to look into my desktop and look at all of our processes and systems and see if they'll successfully convert to QuickBooks online and then train my bookkeepers on how to do it. And I was like, whoa, I am not an IT company. Yeah. I can't, that is not my, my specialty. We convert people from desktop to online, but what we do is we click a button that says convert from desktop to online. Like, I don't know. I have a list, you know, of like things that, don't convert and I can tell people and if their books are complicated then their books are complicated but when we don't succeed in that when we click the button and it doesn't work we have to call QuickBooks we call into it just like anybody else and go hey it didn't work I'm not IT I don't know why it didn't convert I don't know what the glitch is I don't know if your processes are going to convert and none of my bookkeepers are going to know that either so I just told her listen we're I'm not the right fit for you for that if I would have said, sure, let me help you, it would have created lots of upsets later because it wouldn't have been as fast as she wanted. I wouldn't have been, I would have to do it myself. My bookkeepers can't do it. You know, it would have, it would have clashed. So I already know that. But other times it's hard to tell. Sometimes it's personality things and they're like, I want to report every Tuesday at 9 a.m. And you're like, so you're going to give me all the information by Friday so I can get it to you by Tuesday? And they're like, no, I'm going to give it to you Monday at 7 p.m. Like, well, none of my bookkeepers are working between 7 p.m. and 9 a.m., so that's probably not going to work. Well, my last bookkeeper could do it, and I'm making up an example because yeah, yeah, this yeah. hasn't happened. Yeah. But I was like, well, I don't know what to tell you. Like, <laughs> I don't have anyone working at night. All right, so, that, client, that client is fired. You're fired. You're not I mean, even starting. Not, yeah, you're not, we're not starting. We're not starting. I just yeah. go, you know, and I get so many clients telling me, or potential clients, wow, I really appreciate your transparency, and I appreciate because I don't want to set them up I don't want to set myself up for failure yeah. where I'm giving and them and they're not, and they're not, they're not, they're not going to be happy either. If it's not going to be a good relationship, it's not going to be good exactly. for either side. So. so I set, they go, can you give me the blah, 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 blah? And I go, what problem are you trying to solve? And they go, what? Well, and I said, okay, so I can't do that, but I can do this. Does that work for you? Cause I don't, it's like on sales, you know, when the sales guy says, we can give you the world, and then the, oh my gosh. the installer goes, what the are you talking about? I have a rep who did this recently. The client, one of my reps, right? And this is not, we're not supposed to do this, but he did this. The client's like, oh, and we're doing this whole big roof repair. And can you guys connect this microwave vent, right? Okay. And my, my sales rep goes, 
oh yeah, blah, 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 and this, I will do it, blah, blah, and this much money and all this, right? But here's the problem. We, and this goes back to what I was talking about earlier. We've installed zero microwave vents. I've repaired thousands and thousands of roofs, but a microwave vent, so, and it, it hooks up to the roof thing that we're doing, and it hooks up here, but it was just this small thing that he had it in, and it ended up just, we did not do well on it. It was not fun. It was not yeah, like, good for us or the client. It would have been, hey, here's a, you know, here's a handyman partner. Here's a GC card or whatever that you can work with. Good. Link them up or an HVAC contractor. Good. And then there you go. That's a perfect tie-in. Then we do a great job on the roof. So absolutely on that. Exactly. Oh. And since I'm the salesperson and I'm also trained on the delivery, right. I go, no, we can't do that. Yeah. Unfortunately, I can either help you. I can you know, help you find someone who can yeah. or whatever, but I can't sell you something I know we can't deliver. Oh yeah, my, my COO was living about that microwave vent. They were just on the phone just laughing about it. We're like, just darn microwave. Yeah, you know? and, and it ended exactly. up taking, like between me and him talking about it, we're like, you know, we spent probably 20 minutes on three different phone calls talking about doing this and blah. Like how much executive time is that? So sometimes it can every be- Every time. Yeah, every and, time. And here's the thing, every time I fire a client that's not a good fit, yeah. stats go up. Right, right. You're because there's so much attention yeah. and time that you're spending trying to fix things with a client. And I've even noticed, even to the degree where if I have a bookkeeper that's consistently making mistakes on one client only, because my bookkeepers are bad. They are, they are tested. They've been working for me for years. I know they're amazing. If they're making mistakes on one client and the client tells me, your bookkeeper made a mistake, your bookkeeper made a mistake, I'll go and look and I'll be like, you know what? You're right. My bookkeeper was making mistakes. We will go and fix them at no charge because that's not okay. The bookkeeper was making mistakes and we'll fix it. And then I'll say, I don't think you're a right fit for us because why is my bookkeeper making mistakes only on that client? Yeah. That's Some, that, Sometimes there's something with the relationship going on. I got With you. the client, yeah. How, how many bookkeepers do you have? Uh, I have four right now, full-time bookkeepers. Wow. wow. And then I'm hiring another one. I need another one. Wow. Do you, do you guys do any like CFO functions also or any of that stuff or not really? Like sort of, kind of. We don't, I, it's hard to, um, like I have been a CFO for a company so I can do it. But yeah. since I'm not in the delivery division, yeah. it's hard to scale that. So the, the furthest we go into CFO work is for our full service clients, we will do a financial plan budget. Yeah. So we do, we'll do all of their bookkeeping like every week. And then we go, here's your allocation, like here's your set asides based on what we discussed. Yeah. Here's your payroll costs, here's your bills, approve, disapprove. They approve it and then we execute. So we'll do the transfers, we'll run the payroll, we'll pay the bill, so it's full service. But sometimes people ask me, you know, uh, can you look through my books and tell me where I'm wasting money? No, right. I can't do that. Can you tell me where I should go to expand? No, that's right. a CFO service. Right, okay, it's something you have, having been a CFO before, what would be like a piece of advice? Because I remember when I started this business, I didn't even know what a CFO was, right? I, I had no idea what that was. You know, I understood the concept though. And I remember my brother uh, talked to me about it. He said, oh yeah, this is what a CFO does and what they do and blah, blah, blah. And he kind of gave me some advice how I could work that into my smaller roofing company at the time. What it, like tell for the audience, like what is a CFO and then how can you, how can you apply that to like, you know, you're starting a small business. I don't know, maybe you're doing, I don't know, 500 grand a year, a couple million a year. Like, and how can you apply that mindset to like a smaller company where you're not ready to, you're not going to hire anyone fractionally yet or 500,000, 2 million, you know, most small businesses. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm in, I'm in roof, I'm in the roofing world. So in the I roofing know. world, the small, the smallest roofing companies are like 700 grand, 1 million. Like that's the smallest, but, yeah. but we have a lot of materials. We have a lot of labor. So obviously yeah, yeah. some businesses are like 200 grand, like whatever. Exactly. A yeah. lot of businesses are, we're talking 150 to 200 grand. Yeah. Um, revenue, but yeah, so CFO is stands for Chief Financial Officer, yeah. and it has certain functions that are very important to businesses. What I would recommend for when you're if small businesses or if you're starting out or if you just have a small business is basically, first of all, you need weekly bookkeeping, and then you have to financially plan. Now, the difference between a financial plan and a budget is a budget you look at after the fact. You go, how close, to, like governments, right? How close did we come to spending that much money? Uh, oh, we didn't spend it all. Okay, your budget's decreased next time. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that's right, how, right, that's right. how budgets work. Yeah. Financial plans go, what money came in and how am I going to invest it correctly in my company to get more money back? It's more, right, it's more positive. Yeah. A positive so viewpoint. So in order to implement that, you have to have at least one account that's an income account because you can't use 
an account that you have money coming in and out of. You will never be able to do a financial plan. Right. So you have one account, at least small business, at least one account for income and one account for expenses. Right. You could start there. Plus like maybe like, you know, a set aside kind of account. Yeah. So then your income account, you don't spend it. All right. the money collects up throughout the week. Then you go, okay, 15,000 came in, great. So I'm gonna off the top put 5% to reserves, 5% to blob, whatever your, your set asides are. Uh, the payroll is $4,000. Now I have $2,000 left to pay bills. Let me go look at my bills list. Okay, for in two, for two thousand dollars, I can pay all the bills from this date to this date. You do that once a week, then you execute. Then you're not confused of what am I doing. Right. And it's super important because in a small business, when there's less money, it's even more important to have financial planning because there's no room for error. You can't go, oh, oops, but we have another hundred thousand coming in tomorrow, so no big deal. So you have to be. You have to have the financial planning. Like you need the bookkeeping and the financial planning. Sit down with, you know, by yourself, with your spouse, with an executive in your company and just do it once a week and don't let it fall out. Right. And that's a good point too. Like this isn't just for businesses. This is just for as a person as I mean, yeah. cuz you have two two subjects too. You have your business and then even as an entrepreneur, you have you as a person and your personal income that comes in. Yeah. And you do the exact same thing you just said. Here's my money. How am I going to spend it? Okay, well that has to go to rent. That's go to this. That has to go to insurance. Okay, good. That's going to go to my savings. When you do it positively that way, you can actually be more or less positive over your money whereas otherwise what a lot of people do, what I've done in the past is just whirlwind just money there and money's out and money's there and money's out and then that's you have chaos no idea. And that's, yeah and someone goes hey can i hire can i hire another employee and you're like i don't know because i have no idea what how much money we're actually i don't know how much money is actually in the in the company because i spend it all right it's true and as far as like personal so we don't we do some personal bookkeeping if that we're also doing their companies right but basically as an individual if you're an entrepreneur or business owner you have to work out what you need individually because that has to be, you know, between your payroll and your distributions for your company, you have to take that home. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. And the other thing that I find about financial planning is that it creates income demand. You're only yeah. going to make as much money as you want to make, as you feel like you need to make. And you're always going to spend all that you make. So if you have like set asides accounts and savings account and, and you consider that you spent that money, Right. Then you make more money. Right. Like there's no choice. The ten thousand a week or whatever the number is, this much a month has to go to the savings account. Well, it has to go. You make it like it's a bill. Like oh, that's exactly. that's the material company or that's to pay this debt back. Just imagine exactly. there's an imaginary debt here. It's ten k a month. What are you gonna do? Yeah. And yeah, I get one what you're of the saying. most important jobs of a CFO is to hide money. And obviously, I don't mean illegally, <laughs> but I mean hide money from you so it's not just in your bank account. Like put it in outside savings accounts, yeah. put it in places where you can't just move it. Yeah. Create a cushion somewhere else that's gonna, I do this to myself. Yeah. It takes a week to transfer it. So it's not that I can't get my <laughs> money back, but it's like, it's gonna take a week. So is it faster to go make new money or to take time for the week, you know, It makes for you the think transfer? like, do I really need that brand new whatever? Like, okay, maybe not, you know what I mean, whatever. Yeah, and doing a financial plan is painful, you go, Oh my God, I've been making 13,000 a month, but I actually need 30,000 a month to survive. And you're like, oh, that's so much money. It is painful. It's growing pains, but that creates the income demand. If you never did that and you always only tried to live within your means and not tried to expand your means, you don't grow as a company, as a person. Yeah, I, I love that. And I love that viewpoint because that really actually dials way back to something else, which is like, I see a lot of, you know, personal finance advice. And this is good advice to be clear. I'm not arguing it. I think it's great advice to like, you know, be frugal and make sure you don't don't buy that coffee and make sure you meal prep, make sure you this, make sure that. And I, I get it on all that. And I actually absolutely agree. But I think that more important advice in personal finance is work on your income. income because if demands. you work on your income, like you're figuring out how to save, I don't know, let's call it seven grand a year. You figure out how to save with some of these little techniques. What if you figure out how to make 25,000 more a year? Oh, well then now you wouldn't have to worry about all of those, these, you know, little things, right? And then you would have all of this extra money here. And everyone has their own viewpoint on that, but that's at least my viewpoint. Figure yeah. out how you can bring more value 
to whatever profession, whatever industry, whatever business, whatever your job, whatever it is that you're doing, and Agreed. figure out how you can demand more income. And if you can demand more income, then like like you said, you can do a financial plan. You go, oh, I can actually save this amount of money over here rather than having to, oh, I have to budget yeah. every single cent or whatever. And not to say that you shouldn't be frugal. You should live within your means, right? You do a financial plan and you made $10,000 and you need this for savings and this for payroll and this for this, and you've got 500 bucks back left at the bottom, like that's what you have to live on because think about it, 40% is going to taxes, you know, another 40% is probably going to payroll and then that's all you have left to run your company and live on is the last 20% or whatever, right? Right. So with that, you do have to live within the means. You can't, you, we don't get to have a national debt of like negative 10 trillion or whatever the government has. The, that's why budgets don't work, right? We're doing a financial plan. Oh my gosh. Are we running for office now? No, I'm kidding. No. Yeah, although I would say, I think you would do an okay I'd, job. First yeah. of all, I'd probably get assassinated if I was running the, the U.S. budget because I would be like, I would be like, yeah, there's no money. They, I can't give you money. It doesn't exist. Like this is a this is a financial plan. You're, you're not you're not from the USA originally, right? No, but I am a U.S. citizen. You are a U.S. citizen. Okay, cool. Where are but you I, from? Where are you from originally? Israel. Israel. That is yeah. awesome. It's a it's a very cliche. I'm the, I'm the Jewish uh, you know accountant. <sighs> Oh my gosh! That's who you we want. Also, That's who you want to be. We your also accountant. run Hollywood, in case anyone was wondering. Um, oh, nobody was wondering. They all do. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So, but I just wanted to clarify that it's not that I'm saying that you don't need to live within your means. If you don't have money for the Starbucks coffee, then you don't. Yeah. Don't be dumb. But everything that you look at is an investment in yourself and in your company. So if that Starbucks coffee is going to make you, are you telling me you... my pumpkin spice latte is an investment in myself? You know what? If it makes you happy and that's gonna go, that's gonna help you make more money. It's an investment. In I, I agree. I completely. From agree. my point of view. I completely agree. But like maybe that Louis Vuitton purse is a bit of you know if that's not in your budget, then maybe that's not doesn't fit. Yeah. But if something like go get your nails done, yeah. go get that new pair of shoes, but create income demand. Yeah. Make more money so you can afford those things. Don't go in debt. Yeah. Don't go in debt for, you know, the new pair of shoes or to get your nails done. I, I, I agree with that. But yeah, like this, like telling yourself, no, I can't have that. I can't have that. I can't have that. The more you say that I can't have these things, then the more that's going to be true and you're not going to be able to have them. Again, not to be silly and just go waste money and spend money, but go, okay, how am I going to figure out how to be able enough and successful enough? How am I going to improve my communication ability? How am I going to improve my people skills? How am I going to get better at this trade or this yeah. thing that I'm doing? The and then first... how am I going to figure out how I can command more income demand exactly. so I can go out there and crush it and then I can get my nails done. I can get my Starbucks white mocha latte and I can do this or that. Or yeah, whatever. or maybe, you know, the white mocha latte makes you really happy, but you can't yeah. afford it every day. So you do it, you know, you treat yourself once a week yeah. instead of every day. But also, we got to be careful because the to, nutritionalist walks in here and they're talking about all this. They're like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is not nutrition <laughs> advice. Yeah. I don't drink Starbucks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, but there's two points. First is the first thing you should invest in is yourself, your skills, your ability, your happiness in order to succeed. The second thing that I wanted to say is that it's karma. Think about it. If you're constantly telling yourself not to spend money on things, what are you putting in the universe for your clients and how hard is your sales going to be? Absolutely. You yeah. have to be like... If you want to sell someone a $25,000 roof, yep. your company has to be willing to spend $25,000 on something. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard, but like, it's true. Absolutely. Yeah. So same goes, right? Like if you're like, I can't afford a $3 coffee, then you might start having people say, I can't afford your $500 service. And you'll be like, well, that makes sense because I can't even afford a $3 coffee. No, you have to be abundant mindset. Yeah, it's true. And I feel like it's a weird thing, but almost, like, people can almost detect that. Like, they can tell, like, if someone they're talking to is that way and has that mindset, and then they're more likely to want to work with them, or at least i found. Like, when I'm dealing with really high-end clients, they don't necessarily want, some people think they want just oh, always the budget thing. That's not true. They want the highest value. They're yeah. value shoppers. Exactly. So if it costs a little bit more, but there's a lot of value in that bit more, or maybe even a lot more, and there's a lot of value there, and they can tell the person on the other end delivers a really good service, not just what they expect, but goes above and beyond, mm -hmm. and they're willing to dish out for it. Exactly, you get what you pay for. So if you're looking for a lowest price, you might get lowest, not always, but potentially often you get lowest quality. We charge a lot more for bookkeeping than most companies, yeah. and 
we sell book I sell bookkeeping every week I sell new clients and and they know we charge more yeah but what we deliver is highest quality you know perfect and complete financial records for the business owners peace of mind I love it yeah so and just because it sounds like I'm contradicting myself like with this concept of income demand and then also like spending money and so you have to apply all of those together for the purpose of making more money. So you have to be very frugal as far as like, here is the money that exists. I cannot spend more than that. And every single dollar is an investment into making more money for me or my company. Yeah. It's all, what's the ROI on this coffee? But I'm not saying deny yourself everything. Yeah. yeah. And, and there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of truth in what you're saying, because like, I remember when I did this roofing company and I started to scale this thing, one of the number one things that I did is I started to invest in myself and invest in the roofing company. I said, you know, no, we're going to get that truck and we're going to wrap it. We're going to put our brand on it. We're going to get it out there. People are going to see that and they're going to want to buy roof for us. Oh, no, that employee there. Okay. No, he's going to get a shirt. We're going to get shirts for these employees so that people can see him. And you know, and it, you, it's a balance, right? You can't just like waste money or spend way too much, but at the same time, be willing to invest in yourself, invest in what you're doing. Clients see that, people see that across the board, whatever it is. And then, you know, that's, that's at least was huge for me in achieving success was just being willing to get out there and just invest a ton into the business. So Yeah, but you didn't necessarily like spend more than you made into investing Correct. in those things. So you do that financial plan, you look at how much should we make? What do I need to, you know, what do I need to set aside? What is the bills that I have to pay? Great, how can I invest to make more money? Yeah. So that's the whole point is, always be thinking about income demand. Like what do I, you know, even on a personal level, even more like I want to pay for this vacation. I want to be able to donate to my church. I want to be able to pay for my kids college. Great. How much money do I have to make for that? Oh shit. That is three times more money than I'm making. Now, instead of getting sad about it, you get effective, you get busy. Okay, good. How do I make more money? What can yeah. I do to make more money? How can I, okay, so I make a little bit extra money. Let me invest that in my skills, ability. Let me invest that okay, good, how do I take that and make more money out of that? So same thing for a business. And, but not to say deny yourself, give yourself nothing, Yeah. but apply a financial plan and use the financial plan to create more income demand. I love it. Awesome advice, awesome, awesome stuff there, Maya. You're incredible, you're an incredible success, I love it. Anyone who needs bookkeeping help out there, yeah. go to this gal, this gal's awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for jumping on, this thank was you awesome. So much. What should people do if they want to reach out to you? Your company name and where they go to? Solvency Now Bookkeeping. So you can go to my website, solvencynow.com. You can email me, maya at solvencynow.com. Um, you could message me, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Solvency Now Bookkeeping. And um, yeah, that's probably the best way. I mean, you could send a smoke signal. I'd probably find you. That's kind of, you know, you can... <laughs> I get messages on, I, I get all these messages on all these different platforms and I send them to my appointments person. Contact them, set a, set a call, set a call. So we do that. Awesome. I love it. All right, I'm rocking and rolling. I'm going to get a Starbucks. Okay, Thanks awesome. Thanks again, Maya. All right, <laughs> okay. thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Okay, awesome.